After 12 frames, there is nothing between our two semi-finalists. Stephen Maguire chasing Judd Trump's tail and significantly, though, winning that last frame before the interval on the black. Eight, six frames all. And Stephen Hendry, Neil Foles watching. Let's be honest, it hasn't been champagne snooker. Stephen, we've got a player who's racked up six centuries in his opening match against the very best in the world. How do you explain mm. the standard and quality of tonight at times? Um... But a couple of factors could be, I mean, w when you're playing badly, obviously there's no crowd there. To, you get a bit of inspiration from the atmosphere, so that, that's gone. Um, so it'd be very difficult to try and get it back. If, you, if you've lost focus, lost concentration, sometimes you need that bit of inspiration to get you going. But, yeah, I mean, it's, it's been awful, you have to be frank. It's, it's, for, for two players as good as these, these two are, um, yeah, it's, it's been awful. <laughs> Neil, Judd Trump, he has looked vulnerable in his two matches here, but Stephen Maguire just hasn't been able to take advantage, has he? No, I mean, you go back to Judd Trump's first match with John Higgins, uh, and let's be honest about it, John Higgins was not very good either. Now, John hadn't been playing, John hasn't played since uh, February or March, and he looked a bit rusty, but Judd didn't play all that to win, um, not as well as other matches, and tonight it's the same, really. I mean... Judd is at the point now where he's so far ahead of people that he's got that slightly edge over him that a lot of the great players have had, whereby they don't always play well against him, they're a bit frightened of him. But he looks to be there for the taking. And even if Maguire doesn't beat him tonight, which he may do, you know, the two guys in the other semi final must be really fancying their chances of, of lifting a huge trophy. Yes, yeah, Stephen, some odd shot selections from both players tonight, particularly from Judd, though, who we normally see as like a real attacking player. Yeah, listen, I'm I'm Judd's biggest fan, and most of the time, I'm I'm, I'm you know, you know, praising him to the, to the to the heights because the things he's doing, you know, he does things that other people can't do. He's 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 former winning six ranking titles has been incredible. You know, 98, 98 centuries. But he's needed a, a big help here in this frame. You'll see Steve McGuire, how he's overcut that red, I don't know. So he's potted the two reds. The, the, the frame's already won. This was, an, you know, cued this quite nicely. Um, you know, it held for the green. Um, we're going to see a nice shot, you know, a typical Judd Trump show. No one does this better round of, you know, multiple cushions to get position. Um, but he needed, a, he needed a lot of help. Uh, you know, that first frame was, was, was very, very scrappy. Uh, we're going to move on to the, the, the next frame, and this is just, I, I, I just can't believe my eyes. I'm watching it now. I still can't believe he's not screwed that cue ball through the, sending the reds everywhere. You know, a, a Judd Trump focus, thinking right, goes right into the, the middle of them, them reds. You know, he can create angles that no one else can, so even if he was almost straight, he'd be able to go into them reds somehow. Um, I, I, I just couldn't believe that shot. And we're going to see another one, which I can't believe either, actually. The yellow doesn't pass the green. So what's the point in taking the brown and leaving the white, the white ball there? You, know, you play the yellow plain ball, you play the same yellow again, then take the brown out to leave the green to the corner pocket. It's just not thinking. Whether, you, know, it's just, you get games like that, you're just, you're just not focused. And this, you know, rub salt in the wound, there you go. Yeah, I have to agree with everything Stephen said there. There were some strange decisions in that frame, and Ken pointed out in commentary. Here, you know, Maguire missed a, a good chance here at the start of this frame. This was some good Judd Trump to follow it, but... He played a good couple of good shots, Maguire, then misses this. He didn't get very close to it at all. I'm not sure quite why. And then Judd, um, well, he didn't actually go into them here, but he played a, quite a good shot. He went into the side of the bunch, which was all very well. Those two reds go safe on the left cushion, you'll see. They come into play here. Now, I'm not sure, and Stephen and I had this conversation, why he didn't go into the two reds there, because he's, he's only made one century since he finished his lockdown. Um, here's another way uh, in a minute of... Uh, of of basically getting on the two reds. Uh, he tries to uh, pop the blue and uh, get the two reds out, and he went round the back of them. Anyway, as far as this, now what about this shot? He's trying to hit a red here. He's not on the blue. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I, I can't believe that a player of his brilliance goes straight into the blue and trying to hit a red directly. Anyway, that's what happened. It went down to the colours, uh, and Chad had a difficult safety shot, but this was a really sweet shot for Maguire knocking it in, getting onto the pink, and he's, he's pulled a frame out here from nowhere. And, uh, you know, it may be a bad game, but it's a much worse game for Maguire if he's 7-5 down. He'd been absolutely hopping mad going into that break. Now he's rejuvenated, knowing he's, he's got a real chance. Well, thanks, guys. Something tells me they're going to finish with a flourish.
After the break, we'll see if Trump or Maguire can seize the initiative. Who will take control of this semi-final and book a place in Friday's final? We'll find out in a few minutes' time.